managed to get a, uh, an update with you tomorrow morning around uh, 7, uh, 100 miles further from the two most further west. Just, just a lot to me. I have here today that you'll get to see later on. Uh, we're targeting the environment of the storms and the role that the environment plays in the formation. And, and so the Saharan air uh, often comes off of Africa and drifts and, and moves westward with uh, tropical systems that become tropical storms and hurricanes. And there's a bit of a controversy about whether they... So these are the payloads that we're carrying on the Global Hawk. Uh, the first is... I brought one with me. So this is the drop sign. You see the picture there, but it's, it's a, a, a little tube, not much bigger than a paper towel roll with a variety of electronics inside. We've, we've turned north, we've flown missions up to the North Pole, and, and again, we're taking off and landing at Armstrong during these missions. And then all of these uh, yellow uh, paths are those Atrex missions uh, looking at uh, the, the, the conditions in the tropics. Flare and the touchdown, and it gives you an idea of just how long that wing is and how much that wing is flexible. Uh, at this point, that wing is empty of fuel. It, it holds about half the fuel in the wing. This is the high-definition camera that looks about 45 degrees down from the bottom of the airplane. Uh, so this is a, a good view of, of, of what these systems look like from about 60,000 feet. NASA has been moving forward and learning how to use the Global Hawk and carry sensors aboard it to, be, to better understand and measure the structure of a hurricane. We at NOAA want to take that and learn how to use that to put that into our weather forecast models so that we'll have more accurate forecasts of the future. The reason this uh, particular asset as an observing asset is really important for us is that a Global Hawk can fly much farther and stay in the air much longer than a traditional manned aircraft. So it can actually stay with a storm 16 to 20 hours. Our normal manned aircraft can actually fly for 8 to 12. With the Global Hawk, we can actually stay with that storm. And as that storm is developing, we'll be able to capture that and measure, and, and measure its structure. The benefit of staying out longer is that we can actually start sampling storms, especially uh, hurricanes in particular, but other storms too, like storms uh, west of Alaska impacting their weather systems and storms out in the Pacific. But we can actually fo follow them farther at sea and catch them as they're first starting to develop. That's going to make it more accurate for us as we understand what changes some storms into hurricanes and what don't change into hurricanes. The, the idea of going to Africa and flying a, 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 an aircraft out there, that may seem kind of crazy at first, but the fact is that's the part of the ocean we can't quite get to that, right now. Right now, the only observations we have for those storms so far out at sea are satellites. And the satellite gives you a good, a good first look, but it's not going to give you the detail of, of that storm and, and, it, and it's evolving and changing into something more dangerous. So we're going to capture it earlier and have a better understanding of how it's going to evolve from there. The benefit of this aircraft is because it flies so high, it flies at 60,000 feet, which is well above the top of the storm. And it's carrying sensors that can look down through the storm. So it's really just like doing an x-ray of that storm, and it gives us a better three-dimensional picture. Now, that picture is also, we're going to get that picture when it comes off the coast of Africa, we're going to get that picture when it comes, when it's in the middle of the Atlantic, and we'll get that picture when it's close to the United States. So it's going to give us a better sampling, a better understanding of how that storm as a three-dimensional entity is changing as it marches across the Atlantic. So using a high altitude aircraft like the Global Hawk, it actually is a very nice complement to the data that we get from the satellite. The satellite's circling the globe and it's taking snapshots of, of the conditions on the Earth. We can put very similar instruments on the Global Hawk and fly it right above storms. And when you do that, that's like put, that just stepping down from the satellite to the aircraft, you're putting it under a microscope. So you're seeing the same data in higher detail and you see a lot more changes and you have a better understanding of how things are evolving with the aircraft that you might miss with the satellite.
we're always looking at how can we improve our forecast and expand the warning time that people have the warning time that people have to prepare for dangerous storms. So if we can increase an accurate forecast, say from a five day forecast to a seven day forecast, that gives people so much more time to make sure that they're ready when this dangerous storm does impact the United States. This funding came to NOAA after Hurricane Sandy and Congress gave it to us so that we could look across the board of how we're gonna improve our weather forecasting skills. In particular, the funding for this particular project is going to be used to look at how we can use Global Hawks and other kinds of unmanned technologies to fill in gaps when we don't have satellite data and to help us when those, in those times when we don't have enough data to really understand what a dangerous storm is going to do. Yeah, you know, we really couldn't do what we want to do without NASA. It's really an important partnership. We've been working with NASA side by side on their Global Hawk activities. We have, we have NOAA air aviation experts and we have NOAA scientists participating in the NASA experiment this year. Next year, NOAA is going to fly the NASA Global Hawk over hurricanes and the NASA people are going to help us because we're going to focus from strictly research to trying to look at how to use the data in real time for weather forecasting. We do have this capability with manned airplanes, but what uh, the unmanned aircraft does is allow for, uh, allows us to reach very uh, far distances and spend a lot of time on station. So for right here from Wallops, Virginia, I can fly the airplane all the way down off the coast of Africa and spend about six to eight hours on station. So as storms get closer, I can spend even more time on station over a storm. So if, if a storm is, say, let's uh, north of the Bahamas, I can spend 12 to, to 15 hours over the storm. Yeah, the, the NASA Global Hawks we got from the Air Force. Uh, they were given, us to, given to us by the Air Force, and we uh, turned them into research vessels. So uh, that, that's how we got them, and that's how we developed them. So they were free to us. I'm a NOAA commissioned officer. I uh, work for the Armstrong Flight Research Center in a partnership with NASA to fly the Global Hawk in uh, hurricane surveillance and research flights. So it's a new potential, we're developing it. We bring, what NOAA brings to the table is uh, airborne science expertise. And we also, we have a number of pilots that fly the airplane. We also bring in technicians that have worked on the hurricane aircraft down at uh, Tampa. And those guys bring their expertise and apply it to the Global Hawk and really help stand up the Global Hawk program to do hurricane missions. Right now we only forecast hurricanes out to five days. We'd like to be able to forecast for seven days or even longer. To be able to do that, we have to study them from the very start. The, uh, the, the beginnings of storms can give us clues to what the storm is going to do later on, how quickly it develops, how large it is to begin with, the, the role of the thunderstorms with it. So by knowing the structure early on, we're able to predict the structure the, the size of the storm and the intensity of the storm better later on down the road. We use the Global Hawk flying at 60,000 feet because it can sample the whole troposphere, which is the part of the atmosphere that humans experience weather at. It's the lowest part where all the wor world's weather occurs. And so this aircraft can fly above that drop sons through that atmosphere, through the troposphere, and also with the remote sensing instruments can sample the entire depth of where the world's weather occurs, including the whole depth of hurricanes, something no conventional aircraft can do. We don't want to see just pieces of the atmosphere. They help, but then you're putting together a puzzle. If you've got the whole depth of the atmosphere, you've got a lot more of the puzzle. And it turns out that not only is the bottom of the hurricane at the sea surface important, the very top where outflow, clouds streaming out from the hurricane eye wall is very important in the development and change in size and strength of the storms.